Are you looking to do deals and master flipping houses? Welcome to the Do Deals Show with our host, Mr. Tim Mott. As a successful investor and mentor to many real estate investors, Tim's students consistently run six and seven figure investing businesses. Each week, you'll hear from top real estate investors who share the best strategies, systems, and secrets that you can use to be more successful. Tim and his guests will pull back the curtain for you to learn their exact tactics, tricks, and tools that are working best right now in today's real estate market. Now, let's welcome Mr. Tim Mai. Hello, everybody. Welcome to this interview. Today, I have Susan uh, Susan uh, Pilkerton on the line with us here. And um, you know, Susan is an extraordinary real estate investor. She's been doing this for like 20 years. Um, and she has worked with and trained for many of the big name education companies out there. Um, you know, you name, Robert, Robert Kiyosaki, Ron LeGrand, um, Trump um, University, um, you know, Russ Whitney uh, Group, ma many different uh, companies out there. So she has tons of experience, both from a real estate investor perspective as well as a uh, teacher, trainer, mentor perspective. And uh, Susan, just share with me why 2017 is the absolute best year for flipping. And so Susan, uh, can you share with everybody? Hi, hi. Uh, thank you for having me on. I'm so, you know, like honored and, and pleased to be able to get a chance to be here and share with you. So yeah, education is the, is the key in real estate. Um, it's what we don't know that we don't know that actually hurts us. And so what you may not know about 2017 is that the statistics have come out. And according to the end statistics of 2016, that flipping is back like crazy you know so we had a downturn in the market as everyone knows and the average profit back then if there was a profit was about twenty thousand dollars well now the average profit is up to sixty thousand dollars in 2017 that is amazing right i mean what, what, what would sixty thousand dollars do for the average person's life i mean they could pay off their college debt they could take that massive vacation you know some people have medical bills that are crazy and they really just have some challenges financially that sixty thousand dollars or even half of that thirty thousand dollars would really change a life so if anybody's thinking about getting into real estate, 2017 is the key. I mean, we have a new president in office, as we all know. You know, he's a businessman and he made his money in real estate, as everyone knows. So who wouldn't want to take advantage of the tried and true way to be a millionaire or at least make a, a good amount of wealth while there's an opportunity, you know? Yeah. And yeah, and I love what you mentioned about... Yeah, it's an actual statistic. Yeah, yeah. Um, I think that came from the Wall Street Journal, if it, if I'm not mistaken. That came directly from the Wall Street Journal. Wow, amazing! Absolutely amazing. All right, with that, Facebook. If you'd like this so far already, make sure you uh, like this video, share it with your friends, and keep an eye out for when we post the entire interview. So, with that, happy investing. We'll see you later, Facebook. <laughs> awesome. Wow. So um, I'm a mother of three amazing children and I came from a, you know, I was a working mother, uh, dental profession. I was a chair side assistant and I mean, I just worked all the time, you know, as, as most parents do, you just work and work and work and you get to the point where you're constantly starting to say no to your children because you don't have the time, you don't have the money or you don't have the energy, right? And so when you notice that your children, that's called scarcity mindset, by the way, right? And so what happens is you, you start to hear your kids repeat that back to you, right? And it's uh, one of those things where, you know, my kids were getting scarcity mindset. I realized that the bills weren't getting paid. I knew that at that point in time, I believe I had one child in high school one child in middle school and one child just beginning kindergarten. So that's a big range of children. And the expenses weren't going to get any smaller. My job wasn't paying anymore. And um, there was this day, this one day, I'll never forget it. Um, I had been 
recruited by my dentist to come in and, you know, increase his practice and make him money. He goes, hey, Sue, you know, if you come in and help me build my practice, I'll take really good care of you. You know, I'll, I'll pension profit sharing. I'll give you a raise. I'll let you go on a vacation. You know, I'm really going to take care of you. I know if you're on my team, I'm going to be very successful, right? And so I, what? who doesn't want to hear that? I'm like, okay, got right into it, right? <laughs> and then um, two, I think three years down the road, I'm like, okay, I'm ready. Where's my raise? Where's my, we're making money. Where's my pension? Where's my profit sharing? And he goes, what, what are you talking about? And I said, I, I'm talking about what you promised me. You know, you promised me all this great stuff. I mean, I've been driving here. If, at that time I was driving an hour and a half, one way to work, hour and a half home. That's how much. And, and he just said, no, I never promised you any of that stuff. I don't even know what you're talking about. As a matter of fact, I, I don't know what you're smoking, Sue. <laughs> you know? And I said, I said, OMG, this is the craziest thing. I have just sacrificed so much in, away from my children, away from my family. I mean, I put myself on a dangerous highway every single day in rush hour traffic just so I could build this practice, get all these things, and this is not going to come around. So I'll, I'll never forget. I said, you know what? My dentist's name was Philip. I said, Philip, I think I'm sick. I think I'm really sick. Matter of fact, I'm going to go home and I'm not sure how long I would be sick for. And you know, what's funny. I heard that commercial on the radio. You can flip houses too. <laughs> and that's where it started. And, um, you know, the first time I heard the commercial, I didn't take action, but then I was oddly enough, it, it was on TV that night too. You know how you're mad at your boss and you stay up in the middle of the night <laughs> and you're, I think they call it six ounce arm curls or whatever. You're drinking your wine or your, <laughs> whatever your favorite thing is. And in the middle of the night, you see this commercial, you can do real estate too. And then I picked up the phone and I registered for a class and the rest is history. Wow. That's awesome. So, yeah. so, so what, you know, so, um, so share with us your first deal. How did you find it and what did you end up doing with that deal? Oh, wow. You're going to laugh. My first, my very first deal was a trailer in a trailer park. <laughs> wow. Okay. Is that crazy? I did two trailers. My first two deals were two trailers. And the first trailer I was, um, because I had been in dental industry for a while, I had an, um, and this is a crazy story. I had a small, um, I don't remember if it was 401k or an IRA. And because I left the practice, um, I was able to, to cash it out. Now, if any of you know, when you cash out an IRA, uh, especially if you're not old enough, you take a big penalty. So my dad hit the roof. What are you doing? You're crazy. You're stupid. I told you those real estate people would get you to do dumb things, you know, right? And um, sure enough, I bought a little mobile home in a mobile home park. I paid $3,000 for it. And, um, but it was amazing. That little $3,000 mobile home cash flowed three fifty dollars a month. So you do the math. I paid $3,000 $3, for it, but I made three fifty dollars a month for 12 months. I think I made more than, I made my investment back pretty quickly. And it's just strictly cash flow after that. So um, that IRA never performed that well. I think it made about $300 a year performance, three fifty dollars a year performance. So even the penalty was worth the risk and that I was like, wow, this is pretty good. And then, then uh, so technically that's a no money down deal for a trailer. <laughs> um, and um, actually what was great about it, the second deal I did, I leveraged a mortgage against a paid free and clear automobile that I had. And I uh, used it as, as a asset based lending kind of, and I went and bought another mobile home and did the same thing and cash flowed off of that. And the park owner actually called me and said, Hey, what are you doing? And, um, I, he said, you know, this person over here, they're cleaning up the yard. So I, I offered an owner finance program after that. And the park owner got so excited. He wanted to do business with me. That's awesome. Yeah. So it was a really great way to start trailers. Who would have thought it? Right. So I ha so did mobile home become a, a big part of your portfolio? Um, 
Not necessarily. I was into any deal that would make money. Uh, single family homes was my focus. I had a real passion for home ownership. Um, my little community where I lived in Missouri was pretty much, I'd say, 60 to 70 percent rental population because it was at least an hour outside of uh, St. Louis, an hour's commute at least. And um, most people rented. So you know what? That's called a bedroom community where all you do is sleep in your house. <laughs> So not the kind they have in Vegas, you know, but <laughs> so, um, they, it was, a, it was a circumstantial city where most of the people, because they work so much, there was a lot of divorce, a lot of bankruptcy, a lot of financial struggles out there. Um, kids weren't getting watched. And so my goal was to, uh, get the community back into a home ownership situation increase the value of the community, increase the family values, increase the uh, homeownership, the taxation. My kids went to school in those tax districts. So, you know, more taxes means more books for the kids. And that's what, what we did. It was the focus. So we got into single family homes after that. We started buying HUD, um, HUD foreclosures. Wow. Okay. And uh, offering lease options and owner financing. That's awesome. Yeah, yeah, talking about, you know, being able you, to use the skill set to make a difference in your own community, right? Oh, yeah, it feels good. It really does. Right. You know? And uh, there was a lot of home ownership education that went into that, a lot of credit, like, um, education that we helped our homeowners with. And, you know, the I wouldn't say everybody converted to a homeowner. Um, it, it was about 60, 40 that converted to home ownership, but people really, really had a genuine interest in the program. And what became of it was that other investors saw our owner finance signs and they started offering the same things. That's awesome. <laughs> um, and so, so I, you know, I know like with that same heart of wanting to make a difference for, for the homeowners, you transitioned that and making a difference for other investors taught, you know, a lot of, you know, uh, uh, real estate investors, a lot of people getting started in real estate investing. And, um, you know, before, before we started the interview, um, you mentioned a lot about, you know, your DNA, right? Like, you know, yeah. what's, what's your, you know, what's, yeah, what's your DNA designed for and what part of real estate investing is best for you? So let's talk about that. You know, in your experience, you've seen, I'm sure, all different personality types, all different, you know, individuals. Um, yeah. um, can you talk about, like, what what have someone, you know, get started in this business and then become very successful and then someone else, you know, never even get off the ground? Yeah. Um, and, and, you know, w what's the difference and what would make a difference for them? Well, you know, it, it's amazing. Um, the mindset around money is substantial. I mean, we're never really taught about money in in another life. Uh, as a real estate investor, you know, one of the very first things I remember most importantly about the very first seminar that I went to was the shift in my mindset. You know, the light bulb went off, and you know, we're taught the traditional ways. You know, go to school, get good grades, and someday, you know, you're gonna go out, get a job, and get wealthy, right? Well, unfortunately, that doesn't work anymore, and it, it doesn't even it, it doesn't even make sense to work 40 years for someone and expect to have another 40 years worth of income in today's system. Right. It, just financially, it doesn't even balance out or make sense. But no one has changed that. You know, I think many, many years ago, Lee Iacocca said the rules have changed and it couldn't be more accurate in today's world. They have certainly changed. The rules around money have changed, the rules around finance and credit, everything's changed and we're still working off the old system. Mm -hmm. So first of all, the mindset was huge, uh, the huge light bulb. And then getting into real estate, I noticed that there were a lot of students that, you know, some were getting results and some weren't. And some of them had invested thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars for these education systems. So what made the difference? And it all came down to their DNA, right? Uh, and it's all about getting into their psyche and analyzing who they are and what holds you back, right? And I, I believe that's the key is getting someone out there and getting them s at least a small success so that they can understand themselves better mm -hmm. and take them down a path 
that they pick the right area for them. Because real estate's huge. Real estate, there's so many things you can do inside of real estate to get to be financially independent. So what's your DNA, Tim, you know? Right, that's so awesome. Like, can, can you expand on that, the DNA? So what are some of the different, uh, you know, differences in DNAs uh, hmm. of some of the students that you worked with? Oh, gosh. Um, first of all, there's the man-woman thing, you know. Um, a lot of women, especially because real estate has always traditionally been a real man-based business, a lot of women are intimidated by that or they're, they feel like it's not for them or they feel like, well, let, let's simply take it to this. My business partner, she says, you know, the very first time I was out with a contractor getting a bid and he was, you know, really kind of condescending to me because I'm blonde and I'm, you know, young and, and she said, you know, he kept telling me, I just don't know what I'm talking about. And she said, I, I felt intimidated by that. Well, I don't believe that that's unique. I believe there's a lot of women out there that feel the same way and they really want to um, know how to a address that correctly. So it's been a, traditionally a man-based business. Um, women are the nucleus of our families though. You know, they're statistically, they're the financial decision makers in all households, right? Um, and you've heard the saying, and I know we talked about this before, if mama ain't happy, ain't nobody happy in the house. <laughs> so what if mama was happy? What if we could teach her something where she could be financially independent, work from home, be able to stay home with the kids, um, maybe contribute financially where before she felt like she couldn't, and make a difference because women are very community oriented as well. Make a difference in their community, their church, their extended family, you know, and that's the focus of um, what what my company is has decided to do. But that DNA thing, that's where it starts, man, the man woman thing. Yeah. So, um, and if we were go to go into that a little bit further, I mean, some people are risk adverse. So flipping homes is kind of risky in some people's, you know, thought process. And a lot of people want to choose to use their own money. Well, gosh, if you're using your own money, you're going to make emotional decisions. And real estate's a business. You have to remove your emotions from it. So that's another thing. Uh, key areas around the country that need to be analyzed. Just a lot of different factors. So that's just the top of what I mean by DNA. Gotcha, gotcha. Yeah, so, so the, yeah, the difference in just personality between a woman and a man, how risk averse you are or not. Um, yeah, that's that's awesome. So, so, you know, knowing knowing their DNA. So, for someone to know their DNA, uh, that would then, you know, like you mentioned, you know, help them decide which aspect of real estate to focus in on, right? Because like, especially for yourself, I mean, you've done a lot. Name, name us some of the, 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 some of the type of deals that you've done. Like, just give us some variety. Um, I, I've done mobile homes, right? right, right, right. Um, you're traditional. I've done um, like HUD foreclosures. I've done lease options, contract for deeds, uh, Subject to, uh, oh gosh, um, brand new construction. Um, oh gosh, you name it. I've probably tried everything. Um, I've negotiated on some, um, what do they call them, probates, um, which is a very emotional thing. Short sales, foreclosures, you, you just name the gamut. I've had the opportunity to just about do something. Right, and, and that, that's really the, the, the cool thing about what you're talking about with the DNA is that you know, that each one of us, you know, depending on our DNA, our strengths, like this, there's, there's many choices for us to choose from, you yes, know, like what, you know, what do we want to specialize in, right? Yeah. Right. Now, now, I, I, I know you also teach a lot about flipping and, 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 you know, um, you mentioned that you believe in, hey, let's take, let's take a new you know, a new student, a new real estate investor, let's help them get successful very quickly off of just one deal, just one flip, sure. build their confidence, right? Build up their confidence and then, you know, teach them about different strategies that would be a fit for their DNA. So, so, so uh, 
the first flip is like the hardest, <laughs> the most scariest, <laughs> right? Uh, flip for for anyone getting started. How do you how do you overcome that? What are some of the things that you know you teach um, to help someone overcome all of their fears, all of their concerns, and making sure that they're successful with their first flip? That's a great question. Um, it's it's really more about the details. You know, what I'm finding is that people that are getting started, they have so many questions. And what if you were to give them all the finite little details, right down to exactly what to say, who to say it to, when to say it, what's the philosophy behind why you're saying it, what's the result you're looking for, not just simply telling somebody to go out and get a realtor. But what to say to that realtor, how to vet them out, how to know exactly if that realtor is the right person for you. And then how many realtors do I need on my team? What is a realtor? What are their jobs? I mean, to all the detail, really, I think is the is the key to getting someone over the fear. Because think about it, when you were a little kid and you were getting ready to ride a bike, right? And you jumped on top of that bike and you were like, I'm scared, I'm scared. And your mommy or daddy or whoever was the person who loved you in your life was saying, shut up and pedal. <laughs> and But you were going, but I, but I don't want to pedal, I'm scared. And they said, just, just shut up and pedal and do it the way that I taught you to do it. Just do everything that I tell you to do and you're going to know how to ride a bike. And if that person runs alongside as you begin to pedal with you, and then before you know it, you're pedaling and they're not standing behind you anymore. That's what a coach does. They kind of push you, but they give you, they tell you exactly what to do. You don't, sometimes you don't know why you're doing it, but you do it anyway and you get the result. And before you know it, you're doing it on your own and you're becoming competent. And I think that's really what the key is getting that coaching and getting that person to stand behind you and go, I believe in you. Here's what you got to do. Just keep doing what I tell you to do and it's going to work out. That's awesome. Okay, so the key, the key for you is uh, details and someone by your side walking you through those details, right? Leaving you in you and helping you and being supportive, you know. So it's pretty fun. Um, I love watching a person um, flip to the other side where they start to see the confidence in themselves and the light bulbs go off. That's that's like the juice for me. I really enjoy that. That's awesome. That's awesome. Um, and I know that you, uh, you, you're also doing like new builds in, uh, um, in, in the, down there in Florida where you are, where you, you, you're building brand new homes, you selling them to investors that who then rent them. So share with us about that, uh, that strategy. Oh yeah. Awesome. Um, well, as you know, back in the height of the real estate boom, um, there were a few markets in the country that just absolutely stood out that were number one, number two, number three, and the top of the charts in appreciation and growth and, and uh, cash back. So basically, uh, Cape Coral, Florida was one of the number one areas of the country. And again, we're, we're back into those days where you know, home building is better sometimes than home flipping a little bit. So uh, we're, we're getting we're right on that fine line where it almost costs the same as it does to rehab it and flip another home. So what we've done is we've created this amazing little home. Um, the uh, the builder in our company, the actual CFO of our company, uh, he's actually gone out and he found he found all these amazing eco friendly products. Our homes are 100% um, termite proof, fireproof. They have 100 year roofs, uh, wind rated it for 200 miles per hour, which I believe is a category four. So that reduces your insurance costs. And what's interesting about it is because the rents are so high here, they're really super high, uh, being able to purchase a home is still very affordable. So if you're paying $1,500 a month in rent and you can own a home for $900 a month, well, that certainly makes financial sense and certainly does for the investor as well, right? So if you can purchase a home and you purchase it and be all in at $800 a month or so, $900 a month, but you're cash flowing up to $1,500 a month, there's instant cash flow with no deferred maintenance for 10 years because it's a brand new home with all brand new appliances, all 
you know, brand new air conditioners, hundred year roof. Can you imagine this? Wow. What What is the? I, I know you mentioned the the monthly mortgage, but what's the what's the price of the home itself? It seems so uh, inexpensive. <laughs> It is, and we've also come. We've also um, partnered up with some of the um, federal programs that give down payment assistance to some of our homeowners. So I mean, it's really super popular. But the price points, you know, the average price point all the way across the United States, right around two fifty, two seventy five, and we're well, well below that. And that's what makes it uh, super easy to get those mortgages that are right where you need them to be. Right. Okay. Now you mentioned that um, you know Cape Coral was one of the top markets, right, going up. Um, how was it affected uh, at the downturn? And then the follow-up question to that, and why I asked that question is, you know, how do um, how do investors buying into these properties that you're you're building going to protect themselves for the next downturn? Right. Like how? Yeah. Question. So I was an investor, as you know, during the last recession. And many, many, many of my investor friends lost millions of dollars, right? I don't really know exactly all of their circumstances, but what I can say is my circumstance. I was into mostly, like I said, single family homes and rentals. And it doesn't matter what the value of the home goes up or down in a rental, you're still going to receive that rent, right? So even if my home was were, had appreciated substantially, and then it depreciated substantially, the rent stays the same, right? That's how you recession proof. That's one of the ways that you can recession proof your portfolio when it comes to real estate. Uh, same thing, um, if you learn how to carry paper and mortgages and things like that as an investor, you can invest in mortgages um, and you can certainly make money that way. So there's opportunity all the way around. You just, boy, oh, that education is key to knowing exactly what to do so that you can recession proof your portfolio in a way that you can be safe. Gotcha. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for that, uh, Susan. So, so yeah, so, so, you know, it's cash flow is basically what you're saying is that, you know, even if the value goes down, people still need a home to live in. They, you know, they're going to pay whether they're going to pay rent in an apartment or pay rent in a home. So, so in a, in a down market, rentals is the way that you, um, you know, you, you recession proof yourself. Like you, like that's one of the techniques. Yeah. That was, I, like I said, I don't know all the other investor circumstances. I mean, I could speculate and tell all the secrets that people told me, but I know what, what recession proofed my portfolio was the fact that I had all these tools in my toolbox, my education toolbox, I could offer lease options. I could, I could, um, if, for instance, if I had someone who was defaulting on a loan, I know I can do recreate the paper and go in and negotiate with them and things like that. But it takes a lot of education and there certainly are a lot of laws, rules and regulations that need to be learned. So I'm an advocate for education, obviously. Cool. Awesome. Yeah. So with that, you know, I'm sure the listeners by now, like would love to find out how to connect with you, how to learn more from you, uh, maybe even do some deals with you. Where would you like to send them? Oh, gosh. Um, I'm launching my coaching company uh, next month, or I'm sorry, next week, actually. So uh, by the time, just so you know, so by the time that this interview goes live, you would have already launched. Oh, excellent. So that's great. So um, my company is FlippingSuccess.com. And what we do is we hold a free masterclass and we let people kind of get a taste of what it is that we do, how we coach, what we talk about, um, what's in it for them right? Which is a very important thing. And that's uh, on my flipping success. I believe there's a little button you can sign up for the masterclass. But um, for those people who just want to get in touch with me, I'm Susan at flipping success.com. Awesome. All right, cool. So with that, folks, you heard her. Uh, you want to reach out to uh, to Susan, learn from her, either um, email her or go to flipping success.com. Um, and get some free training through that master class and then you can learn more about her coaching companies uh, co coaching from there so great Susan thank you so much for this awesome interview you're doing with me and thank you for all the difference that you make out there you know not just for the homeowners and the investors but uh, especially the, you know the, the the journey you're going on in focusing on helping women empowering women um, you know all across the world right to do this and so absolutely thank, thank you for that I thank you, Tim. You're amazing. I I think you're fantastic. I love your smile. You're 
You're an amazing guy. So I really do. I'm humbly appreciative of being able to be on your podcast awesome thank you susan all right everybody if you got value out of this interview like i have make sure you uh leave us feedback rate us um share this uh, interview with your friends and with that happy investing and we'll see you on the next interview all right bye everyone and that's our show for today if you have any questions or would like to get further training from Tim Mai, please visit our website at www.dodeals.com/tim.